begin by just reading through the Word of God, all right, which we have here on our sheets from Luke 15, 11 through 25. Uh, maybe, uh, okay, as we read through this, I want you to look for two things. Look for two things. Uh, the first is the emphasis of this parable. All right, what is the emphasis of this parable? So as you read it, look for that. Secondly, I want you to look for three turning points in this parable. All right, three turning points in this parable. So, in fact, how, how about, uh, let, let me just read it to you all, okay? As I read, you be thinking about these, uh, these several things. So this is Luke 15, 11 through 25. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to, their, said to the father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. And he distributed to them his living. And not many days after, the younger son, having gathered everything together, went abroad to a distant country, and there squandered his estate by living dissolutely. And when he had spent all, a severe famine occurred throughout that country, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country and sent him into his fields to feed hogs. And he longed to be satisfied with the carob pods which the hogs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants abound in bread, but I am perishing here in famine. I will rise up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he rose up and came to his own father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him affectionately. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Bring out quickly the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and sandals on his feet. And bring the fattened calf, slaughter it, and let us eat and be merry. Because this son of mine was dead and lives again, he was lost and has been found. And they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So uh, this is actually not the entire parable, and next week we will continue to cover this parable and the remainder of it that's not printed here, as well as a uh, part that we will not emphasize this morning. But uh, what would you say? What would you say is the emphasis? All right. What would you say is the emphasis of this parable? Many people. Know, this is very famous, perhaps one of the most famous parables in the Bible, and many people know this parable as what? The parable of the prodigal son, okay? But actually, but actually, the emphasis of this parable is not the prodigal son, all right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's not the title that we have this morning. The parable emphasizes a father. Amen. What does it emphasize? A father. A father receiving his son, Amen. all right? And why do I say that? Why do I say that? How, how does the parable begin? It doesn't say there were two brothers, and the younger of them asked their father, right? No, it begins with what? A certain man had two sons. So right away, what are we brought to? We're brought to the father. The father had two sons, all right? And then uh, we'll see later on that, uh, yes, it does talk about how the son went away, but, but the emphasis of this parable is the father, right? And I want to step back a little bit because we can't separate this parable from the two parables that we covered last week. And many of you were not here. Uh, Justin did a great job. And so uh, let's just quickly review what we covered last week because it's very related to what we covered today. All right, so there are three parables in Luke 15. All right, this is all from Luke 15, verses 1 through 7, 8 through 10, and 11 through 32. All right, for those of you who were here last week, the first parable in, in verses 1 through 7 was about, okay, here, here's, here's the same thing, okay? Many people know this parable as the parable of the lost sheep, all right? Actually, 
that's not the emphasis. Although there is a lost sheep, what is this parable about? It's actually about what? Good shepherd. It's about, it's about a shepherd, that's right. And who is the shepherd in the Bible? The shepherd is Christ, that's right. So I'm going to write Christ the Son. And if you remember, I thought this was really good. What, what is the, the son as a shepherd doing for the lost sheep? I'm going to write tender. And then also there's this verse in John 10 where the Lord says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd does what for the sheep? Lays down his life. That's right. So, what did the Lord do? How did He shepherd us? He laid down His life by dying on the cross. All right, that was His tender care. Was that very tender? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that His care for us? It definitely was. That's how He. That's how He cared for us. All right. Mm -hmm. Then, in verses eight through ten, uh, many people would know this as the story of the lost coin. But actually, it's not mainly about the lost coin. It's about what? The woman. That's right. It's about the woman seeking the lost coin. All right? And who is this woman typified? This woman typifies the spirit. She's there in the house. She's sweeping, looking for the, looking for the lost coin. And so, what, what is the spirit doing? Yeah, in a detailed way, the spirit is working. The house is us. We are the house in that parable. And what's the Spirit doing? Sweeping within us. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dirt within us yeah. <laughs> that needs to be swept away. And the Spirit is within, sweeping, sweeping, so that He can find us, um, as the that, that He can find us as the lost coin, all right? Now, this, should, this, should, uh, this parable shouldn't be too difficult. What do we have here? Not just the prodigal son, but the, uh, the father, right? Which obviously... Must refer in the Trinity as well to the Father. And what do we have here? It's right in the title. A Father receiving. Yeah, receiving. I'm going to put not just receiving, but warm receiving. All right. So, uh, my point in doing this little review first of all, if you were not here last week, last Sunday. You should definitely watch the video on YouTube. Uh, it was very, very good, and uh, I, I, was, I received much help from it. So uh, if you want these two, definitely watch that video on our YouTube channel. Uh, so this morning we're here, but I want to make a point that, in all, of course, in all, in, all, in all of these, you have something lost. You have the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son, or the prodigal son. Uh, what does this show? This shows that many people uh, get confused about the Trinity. Why, why is God in Trinity? How is God in Trinity? Uh, it's hard to say how God is in Trinity. How He's the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, yet there's only one God. It's, it's not that easy to explain. But you know what? From this parable, we can know a little bit about why. Why is God in Trinity? All right? And the reason according to these three parables, is the entire triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, are there seeking lost sinners. All right? It's the, it, it's, it is the entire triune God. What, what is the triune God doing? What is God in Trinity doing? He is seeking lost ones. He is seeking lost ones. Now, who, who are the lost ones? Who is the lost coin? Who is the lost sheep? Who is the prodigal son? We, we should we shouldn't let, let's let's not point the finger over there all right me all right I, I am I am the lost coin I am the lost sheep I am the lost son the prodigal son so uh, so that so that uh, that's here now uh, related to related to the father okay let, let's focus first on the father since the emphasis is about is on the father let, let's look at the father um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, Mario, I'm gonna use you if you don't mind. Okay. So, I'll be the father, um, Mario will be the son. Okay, so, like it says at the beginning of this parable, uh, the son 
went abroad to a distant country. Okay, let's go over there to the other side. And there squandered his escape. That's good. Uh, okay, at this point, at this point, how do, what, what's going on with the sun? Right, what's going through his head? This is finally I'm free. Um, this is going to be the. This is going to be an awesome time. This is the best time of my life. Okay, just stay there. Um, okay, now what about the father? What's going on with the father? He's grieved. Is he reading the newspaper? Um, uh, you know, just uh, man, I, I can't believe. But I mean, just. Uh, I guess I guess I guess he's he's gone forever. Um, <laughs> You know, I just I just better enjoy the sun that I have left. Um, absolutely not. All right, absolutely not. And how do we know that? How do we know that? Okay, we know that because of first of okay. There are ho hopefully you picked up the uh, the three what what I call the three turning points in this parable. Yeah. And what what are the three turning points? Indicated by which word? Uh, they're indicated by the word but. Mm -hmm. All right, there are three buts in this parable. All right, and the seventh line down, which is verse 17, it says, But when he came to himself. Then a few lines down after that, but while he was still a long way off. And then a few lines down from that, but the father said to his slaves. Okay, so hopefully you picked that up. Now I'm going to start. I'm going to start backwards here because this this shows where the father is. All right. So what's the father doing while the son is away? The son is away. He's having a, what he thinks to be a great time. Um, what's the father doing? Okay. Look. Look at what the father says when the son returns. He says, "Bring out quickly, quickly." That means it was ready. What? What do you bring out quickly? The best. The best rope. What does that mean? That means there was a that, there was there was a best rope, the best rope. The slaves if, if you were a slave you might have said which 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 rope? There was the best rope. Now, what was the father doing while the son was away? He was preparing the best rope. He was preparing it. Alright? See he's man. Wow. I, what, what, I, gotta, I gotta make this ready. My son is gonna come back. Um, I gotta, I gotta get the robe ready. All right. I know he's gonna come back. I don't know when, and I don't know how long it's gonna take. But I am going to prepare the best robe. Not only that, but what else did he give him? Put a ring on his hand, sandals on his feet. I don't know how sandals work in those days, but uh, you know, uh, it seemed like the sandals were ready. And uh, maybe he knew the size of his son's feet. I don't know. Um, but there was some preparation going on. The sandals are the sandals ready? Is the robe ready? And then what else? And bring the fattened calf. All right, bring the fattened calf. So what was the father doing? He's like, hey, <clears throat> slaves, are you? Is the fattened calf ready? Have you been feeding that calf? Is he ready to eat yet? I, I want you. I want you to get that calf ready because when my son comes home, we're gonna eat him. <laughs> we're gonna eat him. All right. Um, so what's the father doing? For sure, the father misses the son, is very, is thinking about the son, is very sad that the son is not with him. And what's he doing? He's preparing. The son's coming back was not a surprise. He was ready. All right? There was a lot of preparation going on. So that's the father. Then, then the son, okay, thanks, Mario. You can, uh, you can sit down for a little bit. Um, <laughs> So, so let, let's look at these verses, all right? This is uh, Isaiah 49, which is right under Luke 15. Let's read this all together, all right, out loud. But Zion has said, Jehovah has forsaken me, and the Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child, that she would not have compassion on the son of her womb? Even though they may forget, yet I will not forget you. Indeed, I have you upon the palms of my hands. That's right. All right, if you think it's difficult for a father to forget his son, you haven't seen anything until you see a mom with a child, and especially a mother with a nursing child. 
All right. So um, there's nothing more difficult. Maybe there's nothing more difficult in the world than for a mother to forget a child that she's nursing. All right. That that's just it, it's just uh, okay. Yet so that 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 is one of the strongest loves in. And that, that we can ever that of course I'm, I'm not I'm never going to be a mother but uh, that is one of the strongest loves that that can be experienced. But you know what? Like it says here, even though they, meaning the nursing mother, may forget, yet I will not forget you. All right. So in other words, that strong love that a mother has for her child is nothing compared to the love that the Lord has for us, Amen. that the Father has for us. And then yet I will not forget you. Indeed. I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. That's a reference to the Lord's death. Because when he was crucified, mm. where did they crucify him? Mm. Uh, at the palms of his hands. All right. Now, uh, Hebrews 13.5. Let's read this all together. This is a great one, too. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down. Relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. You get the point? <laughs> All right, this is, uh, this is an amplified version. But uh, it makes it very clear what God's heart is toward us, right? Uh, he easily gives up on us, right? No, absolutely not. I will not, I will not in any degree, not in any degree, not even just a little bit in degree, leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down. Relax my hold on you. All right? So the Lord, uh, the Father, this, this is the heart of the Father. All right? This is the heart of the Father. Um, seemingly the Son was far away in a distant country, but actually the Father was there. Uh, he never gave up. Not, not, not even to a degree. <coughs> Right, not even to a degree. So now, is that touching? Yeah. All right, that, that's very touching. That, that's how that's how God feels about each one of us. All right, now now let's turn to the Son. All right, what what was the condition of the Son? So he was off here, right? Distant country. He didn't, you know. Many people do this when they go to college, right? I want to go to college close to home. I want to go off far away, right? Um, so that was he, he didn't he didn't want to stay close he, he just wanted to get away what did he do squandered right he lived dissolutely uh, GRE word what is what does uh, dissolutely mean it means indifferent to moral restraints indifferent to moral restraints so he just he just let loose you know away from home just boy, I you know USC many people at USC this is exactly what happens right get away from home, live dissolutely. All right, and when he had spent all, a severe famine occurred throughout that country and he began to be in want. All right, this happens, all right? We think, man, I'm going to live life to the fullest, just enjoy everything there is, forget morality, just, just enjoy. But you know what? Something starts to happen and we realize I'm missing something. I'm missing something. I am in want. I am in want. And then he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed hogs. So we might, what happens when we, we, we're in want? We might turn to someone. We might have friends. We turn to the friends for, for help. But you know what? All they can do is send us to the hogs, which are unclean animals. And, and he longed to be satisfied with the carrot pods which the hogs were eating, and no one gave him anything. There's, there's so many examples of this. Uh, uh, in, my, in my own uh, testimony, uh, I, mean, I, I, hope, I think we all have experiences like this, but you know, when I was in high school, I, I did very well in high school. Um, I, was, I, I gave the commencement speech at high school graduation. But you know what? Uh, afterwards, I, I felt like I was in want. Like not satisfied. Um, something was. It seemed like you know. I should have felt. Sa I should have felt satisfied, right? That's that's a, you know, that's not being the commencement speaker at USC, but that's that's something to speak of. But, um, but I was still in want. I was still in want. All right. Seemingly enjoyed, 
high school, but actually, no. Uh, <laughs> so, so it, it didn't satisfy me. It didn't satisfy me. Uh, another example is, uh, you know, there's a, a famous basketball player named Michael Jordan. And uh, just re recently, in the last uh, couple of months, there was an extensive article where uh, uh, an ESPN writer just really got a lot of time with them. And uh, he, uh, he's, he's got a, a lot of accomplishments, uh, one of the most famous people in the world. But uh, you know what? He is not satisfied. Right now, uh, he, he, he doesn't know what to do with himself because although he attained some of the greatest things, um, he is still in want. And he is longing to be satisfied, but, but he's not satisfied. All right? So, um, all right. Uh, so that is, that's the condition. That's the condition of the son. All right? Not satisfied, destitute, living dissolutely. Um, now, all right, this is, this is where we, this is, this is a good part. All right, uh, so I need Mario, I need you again. Yeah, that's right, you go over there. All right, so now we come, so what, so the son, the turn here is, but when he came to himself, right, when he came to himself, so he realizes, hey, what's going on here? Um, then he, he prepares this, he realizes, man, I, I better, I, I'm, I'm in such a bad condition. Many times it's happened to us too. Like we refuse to turn to the Lord until it just until there's no other option, right? We might try this, we try to fix this, try to do that, but then eventually, what can I do? There's only one option: pray. All right. Um, so here he is, uh, and he prepares his speech. Right? What's his speech? Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he's ready. He's like, okay. He gets the courage to come back to his father, all right? And here's the father, so he starts to, he starts to come back, and I hope we, we could all, yeah, okay, you have to stay there, stay there, all right? All right, what, what did the son do? He prepared the speech, and then uh, on line 10, like halfway down, it says, he rose up and came to his own father. Very simple, all right? What did he do? He rose up and he came. He rose up and he came. And here's the father, as soon, at least the way it's recorded in the Bible, all right? He was in a distant country, right? Was he far away? No. He was far away in a distant country. But the way the Bible records it is, he rose up and came, and as soon, it's almost like as soon as he started coming, what was the father doing? The father was, the father could see him, all right? Just a little turn. He just rose up and started coming. And what did the father do? <laughs> father saw him, move with compassion, and waited for him to come to the house. No. no. What did he do? He ran. Yeah, that's right. He ran. <laughs> and what did he do? <laughs> he fell on his, his neck. neck. And kiss him affectionately. <laughs> um, but, 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 uh, but you get the point, all right? What, what did the son have to do? Just a little turn. Just a little turn. What did the father do? The father did everything else. He didn't, he didn't have to come all the way home. The father, and the father didn't just walk out to meet him or wait, but he, he ran. He ran. Okay. Thanks, Mario. And kissed him. <clears throat> affectionately, Amen. affectionately, right? Full of love, full of compassion. So there's the father, he kissed the son. And then from that point forward, so the son, then the son starts to, he starts to give a speech, right? Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And then what did the father do? He's like, son, don't worry about it. You know, I realized it was... You know, I've, I've been waiting for you. He just completely ignored what the son said. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was almost like he didn't hear him. And furthermore, he cut the son off. Because the son didn't have a, a chance to finish his speech. The end of his speech was, make me like one of your hired servants. Right? But the father didn't wait. He's like, Shh. basically, shut up. All right? <laughs> just, just keep your mouth shut. You come home, let me do the rest. All right? Amen. Now, bring out quickly the best robe. Put it on him, put a ring on his hand, 
sandals on his feet, slaughter the fat and calf, let's eat and be merry. Amen. All right? Amen. So, so they're, so they're, so I, I want us to see the contrast here between what the son did and what the father did. All the son had to do was rise up and come. And the father took care of everything else. He didn't even tell him, son, you're pretty dirty. Go wash yourself in the bathroom and then let's eat and be merry. No, the father just clothed him with the best robe. All right? Uh, there was immediate, immediate receiving. Immediate receiving. All right. So now we want to see what, what these items signify here. All right, so as, as you can see in Ephesians 2.13, right, it says, But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have become near in the blood of Christ. All right, that's us, right? We were all far off. And many times, even during, during a single day, we may go far off from the Lord, right? Uh, in our mind, like, like, like we sang in that song, right? Um, prone to wander. Yeah. That may not be physically, but just in our, in our thinking, in our consciousness uh, we are prone to wander that's the way we are um, but many times we just come to ourselves. we just turn all right um, so then what does the Lord do when we turn uh, what does the father do we have the best row we have the the ring yeah right ring sandals and I'll just put the cap Cap. All right, what does the robe signify? Well, we don't have the, the, the space to print all the verses, but in Philippians 3 9, it says, And be found, right, right here, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is out of the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is out of God and based on faith. Be found in him. Another verse that says we need to put on Christ. Uh, put on Christ as what? Our, right, our righteousness. Uh, without Christ as our righteousness, we cannot approach the Father. So that's why we need the robe. The robe signifies Christ as our righteousness. All right? Uh, that's the best robe. Then the next verse, Ephesians 1.13, uh, tells us what the ring is. All right? Uh, Ephesians 1.13, it says, At the end, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of the promise. There's a story in the Old Testament of Isaac and Rebekah. A uh, servant went to find Rebekah and... <clears throat> When he found her and found that she was the one, what did he do? He put rings on her, which signified that she was going to belong to Isaac. All right? So when the Lord puts a ring on us, the ring is the spirit. All right? Can you see? You can see the triune God working together here. Christ, the best robe, the ring, the spirit, again. Um, and the, the Lord, he seals us with the spirit so that we belong to him. Then what? The sandals. What do the sandals signify? Uh, if you look at Ephesians 6, having shod your feet with the firm foundation of the gospel of peace. All right? Our uh, sandals are something that separate, our, separate us from the dirty earth. All right? So what does the Lord do? Uh, the Father do? He, he, he sanctifies us. All right? He separates us from the world. And then lastly, this should be, what do you think the fattened, what do you think not just the calf, but the fattened calf signifies? Uh, yeah, it signifies Christ, all right? And, and it signifies, like we have this verse in Ephesians 3 here, the unsearchable riches of Christ, all right? Uh, the other night, a bunch of us brothers, we went out for a Korean barbecue. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, we ate a lot of calf. Um, and, uh, you know, when, when, you, when you are cooking that meat with the fat on it, it smells really, really good. Uh, it tastes really good, too. Uh, but... That, that's a picture of Christ. Christ was slaughtered as a fat calf, all right? Isn't this awesome? You see the Trinity here? Luke 15, even within this one parable, you can see how the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are working together to receive the believer and to fill the believer, all right? Amen. And then I, I like that uh, at the end there. I'm, I'm almost done. It says, they began to be merry, all right? It just says they began. It never says it ends, all right? So, yeah, that means what happens? We come, all we do, 
So actually, the son, in turning, he only did two things. He rose up and came, and then he ate and was merry. That's it. The father did everything else. The father had all his slaves do everything else. So what do we need to do? According to this parable, whenever we are lost, whenever we turn away from the Lord, what should we do? We should just turn back. Amen. And then what should we do? Uh, um, just wallow, just you know, try to make it up to the Lord somehow. Um, try to uh, you, you know, wait a month, a month of repentance before we pray again or read the Bible again. No. Um, right away. Amen. All right? As soon as we turn, the Father's there to receive us, clothe us, and then what do we do? Eat and be merry. That's right. Eat and be merry. All right? That should be the story of our Christian life. Eating, eating the Lord and being merry. And being merry. All right? And then, you know what? Later it says music and dancing. All right? Music and dancing. Uh, we'll cover that next week. Um... Okay, so ho hopefully, hopefully you get now. Let's read this last verse all together. Romans five seventeen. For if by the offense of the one death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Okay, so what 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 do we need to do according to this verse? One word. Receive. Receive. That's it. Receive what? A little bit of grace. No. The abundance of grace. Alright? The abundance of grace. This is the abundance of grace. And the gift of righteousness. Alright? The gift of righteousness. The abundance of grace. That's all we need to do. Um, we need to receive. That's the main thing we need to do. Alright? Now, this parable is not, is not a license to, you know, to be a prodigal. Um, and, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever I do, you know. Um, if, if we really love the Father, and if we have any feeling for what the Father feels, um, if, if our view is only me, I just care about me, I'm going to have my good time, then I'm going to come back, then you can say, yeah, but, but if you have any feeling, any love for the Father, or any care for how the Father might feel, uh, then we have no freedom to do that. We have no freedom to do that. That doesn't mean we won't make a mistake, but... Um, but the Father, uh, the Father is there. He loves us. And we, we should love Him too. All right? He loved us. Yeah. Uh, we love because He first loved us. All right? And uh, when we love Him, uh, we won't want to leave, actually. If you're having a good time, yeah. will you leave? No. Why would you leave? All right? The son thought he was having a good time at the beginning, but you know what? Eating and being merry at the end probably way outdid what he had at the beginning. Um, so... Uh, so that's it. Okay, now one, one last thing before we maybe just take a couple of minutes to share with our neighbor. Yeah. Um, on your, we also uh, passed out, every one of you got this little, uh, this little track, gospel track. All right, what is this? Um, this is the story of, uh, that we covered this morning, of the father receiving the son, uh, written for someone who has not received the Lord, written for someone who has not believed in the Lord. And uh, since we covered it this morning, just thought we could pass this out. You can, you can give this to someone, all right? Give this to uh, someone you know, or just walk up to someone you don't know on campus and give it to them. We do that all the time. Um, like Justin mentioned last week, uh, this parable applies to those who are not believers, who still need to be found. Uh, this parable applies to us and our daily experience. And we can also be one with the Father to reach and be compassionate and affectionate for others who are still lost, uh, who are still lost and who need the Lord. So this is a little way that we can participate to help bring others to know the Lord um, and to join us eating and being married.